The Good Vibrations podcast is made possible by sponsorship from the Phoenix Light Foundation. Visit the Phoenix Light Foundation .nz for more information. Welcome to Good Vibrations with me, Phyllis Brown. I believe that every person has an extraordinary story to tell. One that will give you hope when there is no light at the end of the tunnel. So join me and be inspired by my guests' journey as they share insights you can use to grow and develop on your path. So this week we're talking to Martine Sultan about her personal journey and her healing path. Hello and welcome Martine. How are you? Hello Phyllis and thanks very much for your lovely welcome today. It's great to join you. It's always lovely to talk to someone with the same mother tongue. Absolutely. <laughs> so we'll try and not get to, we'll try not to be too fast. I'll try not to be too fast, but I was more concerned about the broad Scots coming back and then well, people not being able to understand. Are you Ian? Aye. So we'll try not to, we'll try not to sound like Mrs Doubtfire, but we'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. I'm sure we will. So just for our listener out there, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Who yeah. are you, Martin? Who am I? That is a million dollar question, isn't it? So many things. Um, I actually ask the same question to my students as well. And I think we're actually everything at the end of the day. Um, I'm a mother, Mm -hmm. a daughter, a sister. My parents and all my family are back in Scotland and I miss them greatly, obviously, being over there. But I've got my two beautiful boys by, well, not quite so much by my side. I would say now that they're 24 and 20, but I've still got the youngest one living at home, which is fantastic. And yeah, I'm very much into healing modalities. I'm a Reiki master teacher. Oh, golly, what else can I add to that? I do laughing yoga. I'm a certified laughing yoga instructor, as I like to laugh. You do. Because I find it's very good for the body and the soul. And there's obviously the scientific health benefits relating to that as well. And a few months ago, I got myself involved in the Shakti mats. That's the acupressure mats. Love it. Absolutely love them for all my aches and pains. Uh, Oh, and... Reiki healing modalities, etc., etc. I just, I just love it. Yeah, you know. But I think now I've got enough in the pot to be dealing with. You've got your tools. Yeah, I've got my tools. I've got my tools. So now I've got my tool belt on, and I'm just ready to get out there and get moving and working on the jobs and keep cool. doing it a work in progress. Cool. So in amongst all of that, because I've, I've known you for a wee while, Martine, from that really distressed phone call. When oh, yes. Martine phoned me up and said, but you've just got to help me. And I'm like, well, actually, I don't know how to help you. And I don't think I can. <laughs> you, but you have to. But and you I'm have like, to. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So we had that process quite a few years back now. Oh, quite a few years back now. Mm-hmm. But your journey, you know, your path on your journey has shaped you into this whole self-discovery of self-healing. And, you know, we've just come through October, where it's all been about breast awareness and, and yes. so on. So I think it's I think it's really lovely that you want to honour that process and just and just talk to the listener out there about your experience. Yes, if absolutely. That, that's okay. Absolutely. Thanks for mentioning that, Phyllis, because I do feel awareness is best. And, you know, I still go into the checkouts these days at the supermarket and often say, have you had them checked? Yeah. And they just look at me, you know, as if, what's she talking about? This mad Scots woman. Well, I actually opted for the new, it was a new system or the new scheme that came into place in 2012. Right. And we're starting to do mammograms at 45. Right. So I was at my GP for just regular routine Want about fitness, shall we call it? Yeah. And she asked if I was interested in signing up to get the mammogram at 45. Mm. And I said, yeah, yeah, absolutely, get me on the list. So luckily for me, that year, my birthday being a New Year's Day, uh, the, the 45 was 1st of January and the mammogram was in February. Right. But by March, I was kind of thinking, three weeks have passed now. I've not had any, yeah. any firm results that everything's okay. And it was the following day I got that dreaded Monday phone call mm you've got to come back, we need to see you for more tests. Mm -hmm. Not quite verbatim, but along those words. And I have to say, at that point in time, I froze. Mm. And somebody just, honestly, you can't really describe it, Mm. but it was a feeling of fear, but also of not knowing, because at that point, you knew you were going in for further investigative work, but you didn't know what the outcome would be. Mm. 
So all within that week, I wish it was a blur sometimes, Phyllis, mm. but I'm one of these people that have a memory like an elephant. Oh, yeah. It's a you know? Thing. Oh, we never dearie, let anything dearie, go. Mate, we never <laughs> let anything go. No. We might sell it. Two buy one, yeah. get one free. <laughs> That's as far as it will go. Yeah. But no, and I remember going in there, and it was actually on the Wednesday, I was faced with those words, you have cancer. And honestly, you could have knocked me down mm. from a routine mammogram, not feeling anything, to be diagnosed at 45. And I thought, okay, it'll just be a lumpectomy and I won't need to get this dreaded chemotherapy. Because I'd seen my aunt um, mm. go through leukaemia and she died in her early 40s, my mum's sister. Mm -hmm. So, but back then it was different, mm -hmm. you know, a mm. lot different than what's out there now. Yeah. So yes, I was diagnosed and I went ahead with a mastectomy, a right, mastec right side mastectomy. I had 16 rounds of chemo and I had a couple of weeks of radiation every day, mm -hmm. Monday to Friday, around about the same time. And then they put me on hormone therapy. Now, yeah. not replacement, there's a big difference here. Mm. It's hormone therapy. And people, like there's a drug called tamoxifen, but unfortunately I couldn't get that no. because I had a blood clot in my arm during chemo because if I wanted everything, I got it. Yeah. I basically got everything that could have went wrong at the time. Yeah. But, but trying to keep the positive attitude and the mindset during that time, I think it's the hardest time I've ever had to deal with something like that. Mm -hmm. And I have no idea still sometimes where that strength comes from. Mm -hmm. Was it the fear of dying? Mm -hmm. Which I think now, looking back, because I wrote some journals over the time as well, mm -hmm. and I really do feel it was that massive fear of mm -hmm. death that actually kept me in the driving seat. Mm -hmm. Would it be, because um, I had a near-death experience um, a couple of years back when I was really, really, really ill in the hospital, and, and I could actually feel that process. I could actually feel myself just ebbing away. It's the strangest experience that it's so difficult to describe. So, I, and I thought, oh, actually, this feels quite, this feels okay. If this is what right. it feels like to die, this feels okay. But for me, it wasn't the fear of dying. It was about leaving my husband and my son. And that's when I went, actually, I'm not ready to leave them. Yes. And so then, then I felt myself consciously mm -hmm. aware of coming back into my physical body because I just was lying, the nurses were all around and the, the, cat, this, the cannula had all gone wrong and oh, just awful. And, um, and just that whole decision of I'm not ready to leave them, mm -hmm. the, the passing away part actually, I just thought, oh, actually this feels really cool. Actually, this You're is nice and relaxed. Good. So do you think, was it the fear of dying or is it who you were leaving behind, do you think? Both, actually, because mm. I think in your situation, your body was mm. ebbing and flowing. It was. Mine wasn't. Right. My, I was from looking, I thought, the picture of health at 45. Yep. You know, I felt great. Um, life was fantastic. Smelling the roses every day. It mm. was great. And then all of a sudden, you have this diagnosis, but your body's not changed yeah. within that, that period. It's not changed mm. when you've actually had your operation. Mm. It starts to change mm. when you have chemotherapy. Mm. And it's, it's, it was a slight, it was slightly different for me, but yes, mm -hmm. definitely with the children, because they were young then. It was, what, six years ago now, yeah. and I'm 51. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just say that quietly there yeah. now. But one thing I will never forget is my boys on the sofa turning around, looking at me in the eye yeah. and saying, Mum, yeah. are you going to die? Mm. Because if you are, we need to make arrangements mm. because we're the only ones here in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is in Scotland, mm. outside of Edinburgh. So that to me was... Oh, that was such a big wake up call. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I think when you are diagnosed with something like cancer, and I think it's okay to be a little bit selfish mm -hmm. and think about yourself until you get your, well, basically collect yourself mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. try to accept it. Mm -hmm. I mean, moving on from that, I, I've got an, an approach that I call it my triple A battery. Mm -hmm. And it's my triple A battery pack for life. Yeah. And it's the, Acknowledge. Yeah. The next one's the hardest part. Accept. Yeah. And then the third one is action. Yeah. And action means deal with it. Yeah. So I kind of felt that when the boys sat me down that day and said that to me, yeah. that was it. I had. To, I was acknowledging it, mm. and then I had to accept it mm. wholeheartedly, mm. and then decide how am I going to get through this. Mm. You know, because it's hard and for all those women out there and men, mm. because I, I have known of a man who has passed from breast cancer. That's right. 
And, you know, we do forget that. And yeah. as much as we can raise awareness out there, the better. Mm -hmm. But I think for myself, having or being spiritually minded, mm. it gave me a great comfort. Mm. But I wasn't practicing, if I can use that word, yeah. my spirituality in everyday life. No. But this certainly gave me a massive kick into touch. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was like watching Dan Carter get yeah. that conversion over the the posts. That was it. It was it was time now to sit back, reflect, how am I going to get through this with the tools yeah. that I have and what tools do I need, need. to yeah. find? Yeah. And I will look and I'll go out hunting with a spotlight at night yeah. if I have to find them. Yeah. And that probably is once again going into the fight or flight mode. That's it. I know for myself, I worked for the Imperial Cancer Research Fund. It's just Cancer Research UK now. Because yes. it was the Cancer Research Campaign and Cancer, the Imperial Cancer Research Fund. It was all amalgamated. I also worked for the Roy Castle Lung Cancer Foundation. We all, oh, us yeah. Brits all know Mr. Roy <laughs> Castle and, and his, you know, entertainer of the year kind of thing. And extraordinaire. An extraordinaire person, wasn't he? He was amazing. Um, and what used to, I was an, a regional manager eventually and just going from shop to shop and seeing these amazing um, volunteers, these amazing men and women, yes. as you say. And... Um, and it just the different mental attitudes. That word of your three A's, so... It's so it. the first one is to acknowledge, acknowledge it. it. Yep. Then you've got to accept yep. it. And then, and then it's action. action. And the ones, uh, the people who took that really positive uh, action of just changing direction, changing that mindset, and having that something to aim for, that... Yes. That purpose, that higher purpose. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and quite often we hear people with a barter with God. If I don't die on the table today, I'll go back and I'll do this. And I'll do this, yes, yeah. please. <laughs> so we have that whole process. And I think, you know, I did that for 15 years and I met the most incredible, incredible people um, with the most amazing, I'm going to call it a journey. I don't like the word battle and I don't like the word survivor personally. Yeah. I do think that everyone's just on their journey. See, that's funny because mm. I'm not so keen on the word journey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? Isn't it but that, that's probably because as a child when I was younger, yeah. if I was going on a journey, I was in the car and I was going somewhere nice. You know? yeah. But yeah. it just shows that, yeah. you know, one word for one person uh, yeah. doesn't, it's it, like it, one it, man's it, junk, it, another man's treasure, is, you know? Is. And I think it, uh, for my, just, uh, just, a quick before we go on to you know all your healing your heal your tool belt I think you call it your tool belt <laughs> but I was uh, in Australia with a beautiful friend of mine where she was she had a doctor's appointment on Friday she was diagnosed on Saturday she was operated on Sunday and she was home by Tuesday and it yes. was just it was just like bang yes. for her and it was bowel cancer for her she is just amazing absolutely amazing and so her attitude and her action was okay so let's get this done so it's all out now so mm -hmm. that's me finished so I'm going home and this is where I'm going with it yes like her action process was that once they removed the disease section of her body then that was it mm -hmm. And so for her, when people say, I believe you've got cancer, she go, well, actually, I don't have cancer. No, it's, it's gone. gone. It's been cut out. It's, it's gone. gone. Because it's you gone. want that out of your body as quick That's as it. possible. That's it. And your mindset changes because yeah. it's now removed from the yeah. body. Yeah. And she was just amazing. She didn't have to do any radiotherapy or anything. But that's her. Yes. That's her. And the action came really quickly for her. Yes. Bang, bang, yes. bang. She was like that. I mean, I think it's lucky if you have a maybe an outgoing or a positive personality. Mm. I'm lucky that I've always been a positive thinker. Mm -hmm. And thanks to mum and dad for that, probably, mm. and all the experiences I had in, in Scotland as a child. But I've mm. always had that sort of happy disposition. Mm. And thank God that I've got that. Mm. But you ha we have to remember here that not everybody does. No, they don't. But it's, again, back to cognitive therapy. Mm. And I, that's what I like to use in one of my tool belts as well, mm. is we can change our thought patterns. Yeah. And if we change our thinking process, mm. we can change our actions yeah. and we can actually do things for yeah. our body chemically to feel better yeah. in so much as all the natural chemicals like endorphins, etc., yeah. to make us feel good and yeah. help us along the way. Yeah. So it, it, sometimes it's just building, building the best foundation yeah. and then yeah. moving on up from there. 
and just keep looking at that flag post, Scottish flag of course, yes. flying <laughs> at the top of the yeah. castle. Yeah. And every brick that you put in, you're going to get somewhere. Yeah. You might go up two rungs of the ladder, down three, yeah. but you're always going to be on the move and you're doing something. Yeah. And give yourself credit for it. Yeah, we will. You know. So when we come back, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to look at your tool belt. Oh, and we're going to see. I which better one. put on. <laughs> and we'll see. We'll see which tool we're going to pull out first. Okay. So we'll just come back after this short break. Excellent. The Good Vibrations podcast would not be possible without the support of Phyllis Brown. For personal development and life coaching sessions, data healings, and spiritual insights, go to phyllisbrown.co.nz to book a session in person, on the phone, or by Skype today. So um, before we uh, entered into the bit, you talked about your metaphorical spiritual tool bit, which yes. I just love that analogy. I can see you like Bob the Builder, you've got oh. your hard hat on, <laughs> you've got your tool belt on, your check shirt. Can I have a, a pink hat please? No, you, can pink, you can have a pink hat. I'm have, famous for my hats. You can have any hat. I know you've got a beautiful hat in here today in the studio. So which uh, is your favourite tool at the moment? Reiki and vibrational sound therapy. Okay. That was my first ever. Okay. okay. So with the Reiki, what got you started on your Reiki journey? Well, when my marriage broke down in 2002, the boys were very young at three and seven. And again, that was a blow out the blue. Didn't expect it at all. And whatever else people will know who's listening, if they've been through that type of thing, the what it can bring to your mm. doorsteps, not very pleasant indeed. But I was attending little spiritual fairs, but there weren't a lot of them in Scotland. No. It wasn't big. You'll know that yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But there was one at the local town hall in mm. our little town called Pennycook. Yes. So I went along and I had a session of Reiki and it was wonderful. Mm. And, you know, I've got this personality that everybody thinks I'm either eccentric or hyper, yeah. but it's just really energetic. <laughs> <laughs> but for some reason, every time I finished after a Reiki session, because that was me hooked after the tester, yeah. I would come out and it was like I was just walking in cuckoo land. Uh, it was like everything was so relaxed. Mm. It's like I'd been doing deep breathing yogic exercises for God knows how long. But I loved it. And the way it made me feel yeah. was paramount to me deciding, well, if this is what it's doing for me. What can this do for others? So I actually started my Reiki journey in Scotland with my training and I completed it obviously in New Zealand. Okay. Yeah, okay, so, okay. and when I do my, my Reiki sessions, because I'm a Reiki master teacher, so mm -hmm. I, I teach as well. Uh, I like to teach the old fashioned way, mm. which I think is probably what you do as I well, do. Phyllis. Hands yes. on, yes, yes. Hands on, you yes. know, nothing ever is done, a, done as a quick fix. It takes no. its time. And the vibrational sound therapy, I love it. And I've never ever been musical, mm -hmm. but I've always had a passion for music. Mm. You know, we all love turning the volume up in the car full blast and it can change your mood from, you, can, you know, you can go from A to Z in 1.2 seconds or whatever. Mm. My analogy is yet again. Mm. But music to me is so important because the body's made up of, I think it's about 70 odd percent water. Mm. And then just imagine a pebble hitting onto a pond, like mm. you're skimming, that you used to do down in the woods years ago. And you know, the ripples will just follow on out, beautiful. That's what noise or noise, sound vibration mm. does to our bodies mm. internally. So we're picking it up, we're picking up everything. And again, it's 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 a connection, mm. I think, that we, we have had since we were very young mm. babies, mm. for that matter. So what tools do you use? Do you use singing bowls or do you use oh. meditation music? What tools do you use for the sound vibration? I, I use my own little instruments, not that I've made them, it's things that I've acquired. I've got my Tibetan singing bowls, obviously ones that deal with the lower chakras and the higher chakras. I've got the good old, I call it a rain stick, but it never rains when I use it. Okay. And I hope that continues yeah. until we need it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and I got this new instrument recently, and it's a beautiful thing, and it's like a bamboo tube, mm -hmm. and it's all connected, uh, it's tuned properly, that's the word. Yeah. See, I told you I wasn't musical. Yeah. I just love how I use them. Yeah. Um, they're all tuned to different notes, and you just dangle, and it's just gorgeous. Oh, I saw that at the weekend. That's right, I had yeah. it in Timaru, then I had it in Omaru the weekend yeah. before. And it's just amazing. And I think when I was with you, I was walking around just to say yeah. hi at your yeah. stall. Yeah. And I was just walking around with this and I just felt the whole peacefulness just yeah. come over me. I love yeah. it. Yeah. And that's a new tool that I've been using. Yeah. And of course, a shamanic drum. Yep, yep, yep. I've still to get one and I'm on the lookout for one. Okay. So I'll speak to you about that later. Yeah. But no, I just love it. There's just yeah. something about the beat yeah. and the tone of music mm. that I find resonates with everybody. Mm. You want to be happy, you put on a song. Mm. And in the terms of healing and music, mm. I would say that if you've gone through a situation that's been exceptionally upsetting or, or, or dire or traumatic, mm. and there is a song that comes on that reminds you of that, mm. it may bring up sadness, it mm. may bring up the emotions. Mm. But bear in mind that they've come up because they need to come up. So mm. allow them. Give yourself permission mm. to feel sad. Mm. It's okay to feel sad. Mm. Bring it up and cleanse it and allow it to come out. Mm. Because maybe two months down the line, maybe a year, maybe three years down the line, you'll hear that same song mm -hmm. and you'll be smiling. Mm. And that's when you know you've healed. Yeah. So yeah. I've got goosebumps actually talking about that yeah. there. But yeah. I describe music yeah. along those lines to, to my clients and to friends as well. Yeah. It's, I mean, there's um, nothing I like more than having people together and having some music. Yeah, it's interesting. I've just posted a clip on a Facebook page just recently. And there are studies in Australia with Parkinson's uh, affected people who have really disjointed movements and they, their muscle coordination is just not there. And uh, oh, there's a chap in this clip where, so he can't actually bend his knees, his mm -hmm. brain has just forgotten how to bend his knees. So he shuffles, and then his shuffle actually becomes so fast, he then topples over, he goes head oh, over heels. Oh, yeah, yes. So you see him in all this, and the, and the scientist is, is telling you about this therapy that she's got. And then they put on t tango music, and he's got this lady there, and she's a tango instructor, and yes. he can absolutely tango. There is, he goes from this stuttering, juddering chap who can't actually function to he just, the music came on and he just swept around her, picked her up and he glided her across the floor. Mm -hmm. Absolutely glided her. And she, she described how with music, it, it activates a different part of, of the, the frontal neural yeah. patterns where we don't have to think about my, my foot needs to move, my heel yeah. needs to land, my knee needs to bend, my hip needs to move. That mechanical process, it, it, the music bypasses that and mm -hmm. it takes us into a different space. Yes. We're not actually thinking how our body moves. Which is what we do in meditation mm. as well because mm. we're switching off. Mm. So the music is actually, it's, it's a kind of diversional therapy. Mm. So the, the brain is concentrating on the, on the, the music, the sound mm. waves, the vibration mm. and whatever memory sometimes, cellular memory, that can trigger, he could tango. Mm. He remembered how to tango and all he needed was a couple of beats of the mm. music or a couple of finger snaps mm. and that that man was up forgetting mm. that he couldn't, couldn't walk. walk. Yeah. It's a and I can understand clip. that. Beautiful yeah. clips. So and it's, it's the, Facebook the power of the brain. Yeah. And again, it's it's changing the thinking, but using a different tool. Yeah. So yeah. not having to to think. Yeah. I'll use the word physically, mentally, yeah. but using the stimulus of yeah. an external factor. Yeah. yeah. Music's just amazing what yeah. it can do for us, really. That's why we sung lullabies when we were babies, was it not? To get us to sleep. It is. Now you talked about laughing yoga. I have yet to explore <laughs> yoga. I have yet to explore yoga. I, I have to say, my resolution for next year is I've got to get my body moving. I haven't had, my body hasn't really moved a great deal. We used to go dancing every month and used to go swimming and 
just things have just occurred this year and I, I do feel my actual physicality is just sort of stiffening up a little bit. So we're moving house um, in February next year. So I thought, right, I'm going to be closer to the pool. I'll get back to moving my body so that muscle memory can come in. Yeah. So laughing yoga, <laughs> what, is, what is it? <laughs> laughing yoga, well, it was founded in a park in Mumbai in 2008 by a guy called Dr. Kataria. Right. Now, he got a group of people together and what he wanted to do was to make them laugh. So he was trying to be really, really funny yeah. to make them all laugh because he knew that if they laughed... Yeah. the brain would trigger up and then it would start to release the endorphins, you'd get yeah. the serotonin, you'd get the dopamine, it would fight against stress, you got the feel good. Hey, magic. And with the laughing, <laughs> sorry, I'll, I'll go back a bit. And then what had happened is a scientific study was done yeah. and it was then realised that the brain doesn't know the difference between a real laugh and a fake laugh. Right. So you could get up after this interview today, go around the house and just start laughing your head off around the garden, yeah. pretending. Yeah. And I can guarantee you, immediately you've started a kick release of all those beautiful hormones. Yeah. The yeah. feel good hormones, endorphins through your body. Yeah. So you can you can actually laugh yourself better. Right. You can laugh yourself healthy. Like the sound of that. Yeah, but what I what I was laughing internally when you said about yoga there. The only yoga thing with laughing yoga yeah. is the yogic breath. <laughs> it's oh. the breathing. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. That's it. That is it. Because some people have said, what positions do I need to do? And yeah. do I need to do the cat and start laughing? And I'm like, what's the cat? Yeah. Because right. I'm not a yoga person either. I'm, right. I don't pretend to be too flexible with my body, you know. Yeah. But laughing, breathing, gentle exercising, stretching, clapping. Right. I get that can lead us into my, my shakti as well. But clapping mm -hmm. activates acupressure points on your hands. Mm -hmm. So when you activate any acupressure point in your body, mm -hmm. it's in particular your hands and your feet, it relates to your internal it organs. Does. So you're giving yourself a, 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 a warrant of fitness inside, yeah. a sort of gentle massage of your body organs inside as well. And if you clap above the heart yeah. when you're doing your laughing yoga, yeah. then you're activating your heart. Nice. So you're getting a cardio workout as well. Gosh. So it's for all levels of fitness. Yeah. The fact is, you will have sore jaws yeah. for laughing. You're <laughs> yeah. actually giving yourself a wee facelift at the same time. <laughs> and although you start looking uh, or feeling silly when I, when I do all these different kinds of laughs with you, yeah. like laughing as if you've got no teeth and yeah. running about like a plane or a monkey or whatever, it's hilarious and it's right. really, really good for you. Cool, really good for you. Cool. So you touched on the Shakti mats, so we'll come back after this break and we'll talk about um, Shakti mats and what they are because obviously you have, a, we've got a wonderful <laughs> shared acquaintance here with Shakti mats New yeah. Zealand. So uh, we'll take the short break, we'll talk soon. Thank you. The Good Vibrations Podcast would like to thank the Phoenix Light Foundation for their support. Unlock your passion for crystals and open yourself up to the world of crystal healing with our self-guided crystal course that you can complete at your own pace online. With guided videos and written support exercises, you can enhance your life with crystal energy. Get 50% off today with the code PHOENIX50. Go to thephoenixlightfoundation.co.nz to start your journey. So, the Shakti mats, so of course, the beautiful Nicole de Guy, who's now married. Yeah, she's, she's a beautiful, beautiful last name. <laughs> yeah, she's lovely. She's married. Nicole. A lovely Italian chap. Yes. yes. And he is lovely. He's very nice. He's a very nice yeah. chap. So, um, so, she's one of my Reiki master teachers and she's she got into the whole Shakti mat process mm -hmm. and um, I think she just badgered them and badgered them until they said, okay, then you can, you've got the license. She just kept, she just kept volunteered <laughs> for them. And then she's look, I'll skip your mats out there. And she did, she did all this work. And, um, and so she's just created this space for herself within the organization. So Shakti mats, describe what a Shakti mat looks, looks like for like. our listener. And we'll oh. post some pictures for your show. Oh, well, I should have brought one here for you to look at and you go, ouch. <laughs> a Shakti mat is based on the old-fashioned Indian principle of a bed of nails, so we're right. going back 5,000 years. Uh, the main mat, which I call the original mat, it's got 6,000 tiny little spikes on it. Right. And then we go, ooh, spikes. But they're all 
with it being based on the bed of nails, you mm -hmm. know, the physics of it, you stand on one nail, it's mm -hmm. going through your foot. Mm -hmm. If you lie your body or your, your back on a bed of nails that are equally proportioned, mm -hmm. physics takes away your body, so you're supported. Okay. So it's the same with the shack to mat. It's acupressure without the puncture. Right, okay, okay. like that. Unless, <laughs> unless you want to try and do a headstand <coughs> on it, then, well, I'll leave that one up to you. But with caution. And I think one thing with the Shakti mat that I do like is acupressure on the whole body. Mm -hmm. So you're actually working with your own masseuse or masseur, mm -hmm. whatever you decide to call your own mat. Now, I like it because with my past journey in cancer, mm -hmm. my circulation after chemotherapy was shocking. Mm -hmm. But now my podiatrist said, look, your circulation is fantastic in your feet, mm -hmm. Martine. I said, well, I can actually say it's a Shakti mats, but it's not just my feet, it's mm. on my whole body. Mm. So I actually teach, because I'm a, a trained teacher. It was Nicole that taught me. Yep. Lovely Nicole, thank you, in Canada. Yeah. And uh, she, although she's she's got the license, but I, I yeah. do different kind of works for Shakti as well. Yeah. So I do my classes when Nicole took them in the Pasha Centre. So that's where I do mine, yeah. Yeah. mine too. But the mat itself is, is absolutely fantastic. I use them uh, every day. Yeah. for a minimum of about 20 minutes yeah. and it depends on how you are because from a spiritual aspect and an energetic side of things Shakti and Shiva mm. goes back Sanskrit times mm. so your Shiva is your masculine energy the male dominant energy that's responsible for our very being our our, our survival mm. our root like our root chakra and mm. like our sacral chakra Mm. And the Shakti is a divine feminine goddess energy. So when we're using the, the Shiva, which, we, you know, we have got a certain amount of ego that we need to survive, we but we have to keep it in check, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but when we're using that all day, every day with our work and what life throws at us, we do get out of balance. So to mm. bring in the Shakti, divine goddess energy, by manipulating the energy as well in our body by using the mat and the acupressure because it's relieving the chi, Mm -hmm. the chi flow, then that's bringing us into an equilibrium. Mm. Now, the people that come to me to use the mats within the classes, some people are energetically focused with the chi, with the shakti and shiva, prana, energy. They're happy with that, but some just come for the physical benefits mm. of acupressure to help with uh, broken bones, past broken bones, scar tissue, sore backs, insomnia, anxiety all these kind of things. So it, it's there for everyone. Mm. And it doesn't just have to be used on the floor. Mm -hmm. I've actually devised exercises for people who are in a wheelchair right. or just sitting. Mm. So everybody can use it. Nobody needs to, mm. to miss out on it at all. So with dimensions, is it a meter long or is it 600 long? You know, how long is this mat? Um, well, you probably asked me. I was the worst person at maths at school. Okay. If you asked me in French, I could give you an apply. <laughs> <laughs> so My subjects were French and German. My maths are shocking. So is it, it's about that. So I would say it's about 900 long. Okay. Well, by about 600 wide. wide sort of shoulder width. Yeah, yeah, about yeah. shoulder width. Yeah, about nine hundred yeah. long, and the little white discs yes. that have the teeth on them. How many of those are there on each mat? Six thousand spikes, spikes, and okay. they're all evenly placed yeah. on the it's, discs. Okay, okay. So when they so and, they, and it's flexible, it rolls up. Yes, it does. They've got different products like headbands and pillows, etc., etc. Oh, okay. right. But and I use the foot mat. Right. because I had a blood clot during chemo, so I've got to right. be extra careful. Yeah. I actually only got to go ahead to fly in March for the first time. You did, you were off all uh, over oh, the place. Oh, I was away to Australia and I was having a ball, you an were. absolute ball. I should have been shacked up to go over there. <laughs> but um, I use the foot pad and open it up and I just use that when I'm flying now, okay. in short haul, which is okay. great. But the mat, anywhere, but I will say, yeah. Remember the, the physics that I mentioned before, if you're lying on the mat, you're not yeah. going to get punctured. Yeah. If you're rolling it up into a little yeah. towel type thing, be yeah. careful of your fingers. Middle. Okay. Because if you're touching it just with the tips of your fingers, be careful because you might get a little shakti bite. Okay, so it's really that sharp. Mm, not that bad. Yeah. But the thing is, there's different ways you can use it and it's getting the mindfulness of knowing yeah. that the mat is there 
to work for you. Yeah. You're not working for the mat. Okay. You're in control. Okay. So you've got to bring in that mindfulness. Right. So there's ways that I teach on how you can intensify yeah. the pressure on the mat. Yeah. And then lessen it again. Okay. So okay. it's whatever you're comfortable with because Say you came to one of my classes, Phyllis, I've got, well, they're every month anyway in the Pasha mm. Centre. If you came to one of my classes and I say, right, how's your day all been today? You might have had a really busy day that you've been run off your feet, you've got monkey chatter everywhere. You might stand on that mat and you're like, oh, I don't know if I can do this today. Mm. Whereas you may come in another day mm-hmm. and you've had a brilliant day, everything's smelling of roses mm-hmm. and you can just get on that mat immediately and ugh, that was a doddle. Mm. That's a Scottish word, eh? It that is. was a doddle. It is a doddle. <laughs> so translation, easy. Easy. <laughs> it's a doddle. <laughs> you know, so it actually depends yeah. in in my, my mind's eye anyway, is how you are feeling yourself okay. and how okay. your chi is running okay. and how your chakras are yeah. that particular day. Because yeah. if you're off kilter again, I think I might be another... Off sp- balance. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this would come out speaking to a fellow Scott. It doesn't come out from day to day, but as soon as you're connected with someone, yeah. these words just come, pop up, pop up, pop Harbour. up, want to come out. Yeah. Right, yeah, so sometimes we are off balance. And bearing in mind, that's what the mat's there to do, is to bring mm. you back into equilibrium, back into balance. So where do you see yourself with Shakti? Do you feel that that will become one of your main tools? Do you feel that that's something you're going to take on the road and sort of really promote that? I promote it just now and because I did the Big Body Mind Spirit Expo because I, d- I do enjoy them. Yeah. But my, I suppose my ethos, my... Oh, I really just want to give it out there to let people know what they can do for themselves mm, mm. because we have forgotten that mm. we can also heal ourselves. Yeah. And please, I'm not saying forget modern Western medicine because no. I'm, I wouldn't be here if I never went through what I went through, mm. you know, so mm. that's everything has its place. Mm-hmm. And, you know, seek medical advice if you think you need to seek mm. medical advice. Mm. But then again, I'm all one for bringing awareness to people mm-hmm. and showing them how attitude can mm-hmm. change. Mm-hmm. It can change your whole perspective on life. Mm. And to me, happiness as well. I've got this big drive for people to be happy. Mm. And it's not looking through those tinted spectacles, Phyllis. It's yeah. to me, it's paramount because if you're not happy in your own very being, who else can make you happy? Yeah. Nobody can. But you have to work on it. Yeah. You know, you're not born happy. You're born crying. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? I know that's just you know, in a cynical way I've said that, you know. But, you know, we do in life, we, we are, we have certain conditionings that come from all levels, through yeah. schooling, education, workplaces, family, friends, etc., etc. And sometimes it's just good to sit in your own space yeah. and think. Yeah. And think how can you or what will make you happy? Because I can guarantee you it's nothing materialistic out mm. there mm. because the answers are all inside. Mm. But sometimes we need some help to get to that level. Yeah, yeah. And then if we're going to ask for it. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll just open up. Does anyone have any questions about Martine and our tool belt? Or even just our journey. Well, I'm a little bit intrigued about. I've, I've, I've read about the, or I've seen the shak, shakti. Shakti, shakti yeah. Shakti mats advertised. Mm. So, like for the classes. So, would you recommend that that if you have no experience of these, that that it would be best to go to a class to learn how to? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the classes I I take at the Pasha Centre every month. I actually recommend they're for new people and existing Shakti enthusiasts. The reason being is every week I will do something a little bit different. Even so much as if you can just imagine shimmying yourself up onto that spiky mat and putting your backside on it and then putting your glutes and your hip Mm. and pushing it into the mat nice and gently. It's getting to places where nothing else has managed to reach. And it really is good for releasing any energy blockages as well. But definitely a class, because that way you're under, because I'm trained. So, and I'll walk around and I'll make sure that you're all doing the the right 
positions that you're doing it. But then again, bearing in mind, you don't need to follow the leader, so to speak, because it's all what you're comfortable with because it's your experience. You know, your experience may not suit the next person, so it's what you're comfortable with because if you're not enjoying it, don't do it. You know, which is why sometimes you can put a pillowcase as long as it's not cotton, because cotton's too thick a fibre, oh, yeah. it's too dense. Yeah. But at one of these cheap polyester pillowcases, stick it, just lie it on top of the spike, put one foot on the pillowcase side and one foot on the mat. Because standing is only the very beginning. Because by the end of the class, mm. I'll have you lying your, on your back. You'll not even know there's a Shakti mat under you. Mm. I'll cover you up with your wee blanket and you'll be listening to the shamanic sound journeys that we do. It's beautiful. Right. Yeah, Kerry Grant comes in and does that with me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. great with his music. Yeah. So are there other teachers around New Zealand? Yes, there are. I actually helped Nicole. We mm -hmm. trained a bunch of teachers before she, mm. she got married, mm -hmm. uh, which was lovely. And there are some other teachers around. But if you want to get in touch, then just give me a call or I can send you some stuff through internet. There's no problem at all. There's lots of stuff we can we can do. Or we can do a live one, Skype. <laughs> that way I'll get to see if you are on the mat. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm, just, I'm trying to figure out the physics of how you get onto it. Right. Because okay. you say that, you know, one pin stand on it, but so you have to, you know, go through you. But once you spread out, you distribute your weight across it. Mm -hmm. How do you go from not being on it to being distributed evenly? <laughs> right, okay. Well, when you're using the mat for the first time, it's always in front of you in a standing position. Those who can stand. The people who can't stand and are seated, they remain seated, they put it under their feet as if they were just watching TV. Yeah. And when you're doing that, they can put as much pressure on that mat as they choose to. It can hover, yeah. it's fine, or it can go deeper and deeper and deeper. But when we're doing it for the first time in the class and you want to stand on, what I always recommend is moving the mat to the side and they just put one foot, foot apart, on the floor, mm -hmm. no mat. And the other foot, straddled about a foot apart, on the mat. And they're gradually feeling the intensity of what it is. And then moving into the mat by shifting their weight from one side to the other. Oh, yeah. And that's normally when I start to hear, oh, Ooh, you know, that's when it all starts to kick off. <laughs> yeah. And then building them up into it. But I think one thing that's important is if you jumped onto the mat, no, you're not going to enjoy that experience. You won't get back on You've it. really got to be mindful about it, yeah. you know, and, and that's when really listening to whoever's taking the class is definitely paramount because the higher intensity mat is the blue one, which is called advanced. Yeah. And the, the less amount of spikes, the higher the intensity. Right. So the light ones, for instance, 8,000, the original, which suits most people, is 6,000. Yeah. That's the one I use. But the, the other one is only 4,000 spikes. Right. And when I'm doing the expos, all the guys, I want the blue one. I can use the blue one, you know, I can use it. Yeah. They jump on it and just to watch the colour actually <laughs> drain from their face, <laughs> not realising that this is actually meant to bring colour to your face to help your circulation, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And it's working in the opposite. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you talked about colours there, so how many different colours are Because there's an orange one. The the original comes in orange, green and black. Right, okay. okay. And that's got the 6,000 That's the 6,000 spikes. There is a yellow one, which is a lighter mat. Yeah. That's got 8,000 spikes on it. And that's more suitable for someone with very, very sensitive skin, i.e. to touch right. sensitivity. And also perhaps thin skin. Right, or somebody okay. that's had problems with very, very thin skin or, or very old, or very old, not very old, yeah. elderly, shall we say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the advanced one, some of the bodybuilders use them, but to be honest, it's all about the mat working for you. Yeah. It's not a competition. No. Which is why the original mat I recommend. Right, okay. But I've always got them to try. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I love about them is the colour and the actual hilarity yeah. and the laughing that it actually creates when you're talking yeah. about them. Yeah. So, yeah, you're getting another health benefit. You're laughing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's true. We're laughing through the pain. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, of course, the most important thing, Phyllis, yes. laughing with somebody. Yes, who's also going through the pain. <laughs> Beautiful, oh, beautiful. It. Oh, 
I think that's just wonderful and it's just so lovely to have you in the studio today Martine it's oh, been thanks. an absolute joy just to hear your journey and to hear your enthusiasm and you've certainly had us all having a giggle in here <laughs> our minds are racing with visions of spikes and mats and all sorts I should have brought one with me I know I know but next time next time so what I thought I would do is um We'll just get you to uh, let the listener know how they can get in touch with you. So what's your contact details? Right. The best place um, on the internet is actually Facebook, mm -hmm. which is Martine F. Saltoon. Mm -hmm. I post all my stuff on my personal page anyway. It's kind of used as a, an, old, an old page. Yeah. And my cell phone number is 021. Yep. 021 again, mm -hmm. 99969. Okay. And my email address is Martine Saltoon. Yeah. All lowercase, no dots, no commas yeah. at xtra.co.nz cool. and I'm always about for a chat yeah. because at the end of the day we're in it together yeah yeah beautiful. let's be happy beautiful so before you go I've got this lovely quote that I found um, for you which I think this really uh, just a tip, a tip and it's got the word that you may not like but oh. anyway <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go for it. Journey. Journey. <laughs> it has, it has. <laughs> so this was the say that I found for your show, which is, you may run, walk, stumble, drive or fly, but never lose sight of the reason for the journey. And it is a journey now, so that's very apt. Mm, thank you. Mm, mm. So it's been an absolute joy. Thank you so much for your time and uh, you take care. Thank you. You've been listening to Good Vibrations with me, Phyllis Brown. I hope my guest story today has inspired you to grow and make positive changes in your life. You can find Good Vibrations on Facebook and Instagram and share your journey with us. If you haven't yet, go to Apple Podcast and share, rate and review our show. Or follow us on Spotify and YouTube. Thank you for taking the time to listen and join us next week for more Good Vibrations. This podcast was brought to you by the Phoenix Light Foundation. For personal development courses, visit the phoenixlightfoundation.co.nz and use the code PHOENIX50 for 50% off all courses.